Mafia state? Seriously? This, this is fascinating. A uh, New York Supreme Court, uh, state Supreme, Supreme Court judge ruled yesterday against Donald Trump. Now, here's what had been going on. Uh, this is a report from the Daily Beast, by the way. Letitia James, the attorney general for the state of New York, filed a lawsuit against the Trump organization and, and its senior executives, including Donald Trump, uh, alleging, uh, it's a $250 million lawsuit, alleging uh, basically a quarter of a billion dollars worth of fraud and uh, saying that the, quote, real estate mogul and family members he made executives got away with minimal scrutiny. That's a, a phrase from the, from the uh, indictment, as it were, or the charges, or whatever you call them in, in these civil cases. And what they're basically charging him with is ripping off the government, the government of New York State, saying that his properties, when he, when he would go, let's say that he had a, a property worth $10 million. If he wants to get financing for it, he would go to the bank and say, my property's worth $30 million. And he'd get a $30 million loan. He'd pay off the $10 million and he'd live on the $20 million. If he had, when it came time to pay taxes on it, though, he'd go to the state and he'd say, well, my property's only worth $3 million. And so he'd only pay a very, very small amount of taxes on that $10 million property. And that he just did this his whole entire life, that his father did it before him. I mean, that's not part of the, part of the charges, but that, that certainly is part of the historical record. Uh, this goes back to this piece from 2017, I think it was, or 2018, when the New York Times got a hold of uh, some of Donald Trump's tax records and found that he had, in fact, been lying about the value of his properties, both to the banks and to the state of New York. This is not new stuff. This is stuff that, you know, people in New York have known forever and that the rest of us have known for, uh, what, six years now, seven years? So he's 34 days out. Well, actually, I think it's 32. He's about a month out now from his civil trial in New York, uh, where his finances are going to be put under a microscope. And what Trump has been arguing in court is that the, the companies that have this information, that know the actual value of his properties, and that also know how much he's gotten from his loans, and also know how much he's paid in his taxes. This is principally like his bookkeepers, his CPA firms, his banks, his investment houses, they, you know, all, all of these agencies, that they cannot legally release that information to the state of New York because the state of New York will make it public and it's supposed to be proprietary. What they have claimed is that uh, uh, these documents, quote, contain highly sensitive, non-public, proprietary information. In this case, about one of his Zurich insurance. So Trump, you know, when Letitia James said, okay, we're going to prosecute you and we need these documents, and these organizations said, no, we're not going to give you the documents because Trump instructed us not to, and we work for him, not for you, she sued. She said, no, you know, you have to give me the stuff. And they were like, no, we don't. And so it went to the state Supreme Court, the state of New York Supreme Court. And yesterday, Tuesday, the state Supreme Court ruled you can't hide that stuff. If Donald Trump was committing crimes here in the state of New York, you have to release those documents. Now, there wasn't a time, to the best of my knowledge, I haven't read the, the, the ruling. I've just read the news stories about the ruling, but I haven't seen in any of them that the time period in which the Trump organization or Zurich Insurance or, you know, uh, his, his bookkeepers or any other organization that he was uh, working with has to reveal this information. I don't see it. So, but, but the, so I can't say, you know, tomorrow we're going to find out or to this afternoon we're going to find out, but it's going to come whether it's going to be released in a month in open court when the trial begins, assuming that the trial begins when it's scheduled to begin or whether it's going to be something that is released to the general public before then, you know, via the courts, or whether any of these companies or agencies even decide to just put it out there, or whether Donald Trump himself is going to release it. I mean, he's been known to do that with things that in some cases weren't in his own best interest, just trying to grab the news cycle that particular day.
No idea which of those is going to be the scenario, but, but keep an eye on this. So this is going to get interesting because basically, and, and you know, what they're saying is what Letitia James is saying is that these are strategies that the mafia uses, that Trump is acting like a mob boss. And, you know, frankly, that makes perfect sense. He was mobbed up. I mean, you know, the, the Trump Tower was built with, with uh, concrete from a mob-based company. Why? Well, his lawyer, Roy Cohn, was also the lead lawyer for the, for the uh, oh, it was a Bonanno family? It, was, it wasn't that. It was a, a, a crime family that started with an S, as I recall. But in any case, he was the, you know, Roy Cohn was the, was the lawyer, the consigliere, for New York's largest mafia family and for Donald Trump. And he was Donald Trump's mentor. So surprise, surprise, Donald Trump is asking like a, acting like a mafia character and tried to run our government as if it was the mafia. Speaking of Donald Trump, he was on Glenn Beck's show yesterday. And Glenn Beck, this is, this is just you know, it's kind of like an, an uh-oh alert. Uh-oh. Trump goes on Beck's show, and Beck says to him, you know, in 2016, you said, lock her up. And then when you became president, you said, you know, we don't do that in America. That's just not the right thing to do. And Trump is like, yeah, yeah. So Beck says, do you regret not locking her up? And if you're president again, will you lock people up? And Trump says, there's no choice. Uh, the answer is you have no choice because of what they're doing to us. Lock them up. Donald Trump just told a hate radio talk show host that if he becomes president, he's going to start imprisoning people. Not investigating, not, you know, prosecuting, imprisoning. This is, this is, this is Putin. This is, this is uh, Viktor Orban in Hungary. This is dictator stuff. This is what El Sisi does in Egypt. This is what Erdogan does in Turkey. This is what Marcos does in, in the Philippines. I mean, this, this is what Bolsonaro did in Brazil. This is what fascists do. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, you know, we're going to start, we're going to intentionally go out and lock up our, our political competition. Now, Trump is saying that the reason why he's justified in doing this is because the Biden administration is prosecuting him. Well, you know, A, it's not the Biden administration, it's the Department of Justice, which outlasts any single administration. In fact, several of the prosecutors who are going after him are Republicans. But that said, they're not going after him because he's the political opponent of the Democrats. They're going after him because he's a crook. That's what the Justice Department does. They go after criminals. And Donald Trump, to my mind, now he hasn't been adjudicated a criminal yet. He has been adjudicated a rapist. Well, you know, so I guess that makes him a criminal, but that was in civil court. It was not a criminal proceeding. But he's on the edge of being adjudicated as a criminal. And that's what the criminal justice system does, is it brings justice on behalf of the victims to criminals. 